rational function, as opposed to the reciprocal functions we've already talked about, is a ratio of two polynomials, and we often write this as f of x is equal to p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are different polynomials. The domain of f of x is all the real numbers except for anything that makes the denominator zero. So the denominator of a fraction cannot be zero ever. Let's talk about some special types of rational functions. We're going to talk about two specific types. They're going to be called continuous and discontinuous. Continuous. So one type of rational function is y equals x squared over x squared plus 1. If you go and plot this in your calculator, you need to make sure that you put the denominator into parentheses, otherwise the graphing calculator will not graph this correctly. When you graph this on your calculator, you will see something that looks similar to this. This is called a continuous function. And the reason that it's called continuous is because if you put your pencil on the curve and you follow it, you don't have to pick your pencil up in order to get from one side of the curve to the other. But not all functions, when you graph them, will that happen. Sometimes you'll have places where the graph is discontinuous. That's when we look for places where there is an error in the table or a place where there's a break in a graph. So if you look at the graph of y equals x plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 2, you'll see this graph on your calculator. And at first glance, you might think to yourself, oh, well, that's continuous. But then if you go to the table function, you'll see that at x equals negative 2, y says error. And the reason that happens is because the denominator cannot be 0. And negative 2 is that one value that will make the denominator 0. The reason the graph is just a straight line, it's just linear, is because I want you to notice that there's a common factor in the numerator and denominator that can be canceled. So really the graph is just y equals x plus 3. However, at negative 2, what we would actually do if we graph this by hand is we'd put a little o at x equals negative 2 where it hits the graph. It's called a hole. We also sometimes call it a point discontinuity because it's just a point on the graph that the graph does not exist at. So technically, you would have to bring your pencil to here, pick it up, and start again on the other side of that point. Another type of discontinuity that you'll actually be able to see is when you graph this. When you put it in your graphing calculator, make sure you put both the numerator and denominator in parentheses. And when you graph it, you'll see something that looks like this. Yep, I should make this look better. It actually looks more like this. Well, we've been dealing with graphs that look like this. This is one of those graphs that has asymptotes. And there's an asymptote here and an asymptote here. The vertical asymptote, that's the one where you make the denominator equal to 0. So if you make the denominator, denominator equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll find out that x equals 2 is your vertical asymptote. We'll talk about how to find your vertical has, or the horizontal asymptote in a little bit. The functions we're going to deal with are not going to look like the ones we were just dealing with in with uh, reciprocal functions. With reciprocal functions, our equations look like this. And it was very easy to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes because the vertical asymptote was x equals h, 
and the horizontal asymptote was y equals k. But in this section, the equations we're going to deal with won't look exactly like that. Going back for a moment here, when we canceled the x plus 2 from the numerator and denominator, that has a special name. It's called a removable discontinuity. And the reason it's called removable is because you're literally removing the x plus 2 from the numerator and denominator. But this function also had a discontinuity, but there was nothing I could cancel. No, you cannot cancel the x's. I know you wanna, but you can't. And because nothing here cancels, we call it a non-removable discontinuity. In problem one, we're going to look at what the domain and points of discontinuity for each rational function are. I actually do not like this phrase, points of discontinuity, because there are two types of discontinuities. There's a point, well, there's three actually. There's a point discontinuity, an infinite discontinuity, that's an asymptote, and there's something called a jump discontinuity, which occurs when there's a little gap in the graph. Are the points of discontinuity removable or non-removable? What are the x and y intercepts? So when we're going to set up this problem to figure out discontinuity, it helps if we have both the numerator and denominator written in factored form. So one of the things we have to go back to is factoring. How does factoring work? Well, at least in the numerator, there's nothing to factor. No greatest common factor, and it's not a quadratic, so I'm going to leave it alone. The denominator, however, is a quadratic equation. And it's a general quadratic equation. It's one where we look for the two numbers that multiply to give you the third term. But when you add those same two numbers, you get the middle term. What two numbers multiply to give you three, but when you add them, you get negative four. Well, it's negative one and negative three. Now that it's in factored form, discontinuities occur anywhere where the denominator might be zero. So what values of x make the denominator zero? So discontinuities. Well, if x equals one, you'll get zero in the denominator because you'll get zero times negative two. And also, if x is equal to three, the denominator will be zero. So those are two of our discontinuities. The discontinuities are non-removable. The reason they are non-removable is because you cannot do any canceling. If you can cancel a factor from the numerator and denominator because they're the same, it's removable. If not, they're non-removable. The last thing that we want to look at is the x and y intercepts. Remember that an x-intercept is where y equals 0. So if you plug in 0 for y into that equation, and you think about this like a proportion that can be cross-multiplied, well, when you multiply those together, the x squared minus 4x plus 3 ends up canceling out because it's 0. And that's going to equal x plus 3. So it turns out, if you just set the numerator equal to 0, you'll find the uh, x-intercept. So the x-intercept is at x equals negative 3. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So if you plug in 0 every place you see an x, and then simplify that expression, that'll tell you the y-intercept. So the numerator, 0 plus 3, is 3. The denominator is going to be 0 minus 0 plus 3, which is 3. And it turns out that the y-intercept is at 1. Let's try this again with y equals x minus 5 over x squared plus 1. So. The first thing I want to do is identify places where there's discontinuity. So I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So I subtract 1 
And then I take the square root and, oh, you can't take the square root of a negative. Then is there a number that if you plug it in for x and square it and add it to 1, you'll get 0? No. So there's no discontinuity because the domain is all real numbers. No discontinuity. So I don't have to worry about removable or non-removable. All I have to worry about now is x and y intercepts. So the x-intercept is where y equals 0. Well, when y equals 0, all you have to do is set the numerator equal to 0, and you'll find out what the x-intercept is. For the y-intercept, you plug in x equals 0. So everywhere you see an x, you plug in a 0, and you're going to get negative 5 over 1, which is just negative 5. Let's try this one last time y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x minus 4. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor the numerator. The two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 4, but when you add those same two numbers you get negative 3, are going to be negative 4 and positive 1. Okay, so first for our discontinuities, discontinuity. You take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So the discontinuity is at x equals 4. Next, is that discontinuity removable? Well, look at that. I have the same factor in the numerator and denominator. That means I can remove them. So that particular discontinuity is removable. What's the x and y intercepts? Okay, so x intercept when y equals 0. All you have to do is take the numerator and set it equal to 0. And I'm going to actually take the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take the factored form and set it equal to 0. And the reason I'm going to do that is because then I can do the zero product property. Actually, I should get rid of the one. Um, for the x-intercept, remember I removed the x minus 4, so it's not there. So I don't know why I put it there. So really all I cared about was the part that was left over. So the part that's left over after I'm done removing my discontinuity, I set that numerator equal to 0, and then I'm going to find out that x is negative 1. That's the x-intercept. The y-intercept, where x equals 0, I'm going to plug 0 into the original function, although it really doesn't matter. I actually can plug 0 into the rewritten function because I'm going to get the exact same answer. I'm going to find out that y equals 1 is the, uh, or the y-intercept. When we were finding the discontinuities, one of the things we were finding was something called vertical asymptotes. If you have a non-removable discontinuity, that means you can't cancel it out, then the value you're left with in the denominator that makes, the value of x that makes the denominator equal to zero is going to be a vertical asymptote. So, let's look at a practice problem. What if I gave you y equals 1 over x squared minus 16? If I factor the denominator, that's that special difference of two squares. If you square root x squared and you square root 16, you find out that factored form is x plus 4x minus 4. Since the denominators are non-removable, then the vertical asymptotes are at x equals negative 4 and at x equals positive 4. There's two of them. Any value of x that makes the denominator 0 is going to be a discontinuity. If it's non-removable, it's a vertical asymptote. Look at this one. y equals x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 3. 1, I cannot factor the denominator. The only time you can factor a quadratic in the denominator is if it's a difference of two squares. If it's a sum, can't be factored under the real number system. And so if you try to solve this, 
for x, you end up with this, which we already said can't be done. There's no vertical asymptote. And the last one, y equals x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. In order to find vertical asymptotes, I'm going to start by factoring the denominator, so the two numbers that multiply to give you 2. But when you add them, you get 3, are x plus 2 and x plus 1. But I want you to notice that's removable. If that's removable, then the vertical asymptote is just going to be where x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 2 must be the vertical asymptote.